Hey guys, welcome back uh, to the Football Expert or American Football Network, wherever you are watching this video. Um, I am joined here by Lincoln, the football, our American Football Network, uh, and we are here to discuss North Carolina, South Carolina, the ESPN game day of the week. Uh, it is going to be kind of an interesting matchup, probably the most interesting Saturday matchup. Uh, obviously on Thursday you have Florida and Utah. Uh, on Sunday, you have LSU and Florida State, and on Monday, you have Clemson and Duke. And really, to be honest, all three of those matchups are somewhat more interesting in their own unique ways. Uh, but this game lands on a Saturday, um, and it is an interesting matchup. Plus, it's a rivalry with being North and South Carolina. Um, I don't think either of us particularly are fond of either of the teams, um, but no. we will talk about each of them. Uh, do make sure that you check out College Football Roundup. It is our podcast channel. Uh, there will be a video out in either now or in the coming days uh, for our podcast uh, week-by-week predictions uh, where we talk about the top 20 games of that week. Uh, so, Lincoln, why don't you start off with uh, your three keys for the North Carolina victory? Yeah, so my three keys to the game for the Tar Heels, number one is just come out firing on offense, put the pressure on South Carolina, put some points on the board, make them respond. Uh, you know, I, you know, if Drake May comes out, first drive, six for six, you know, 70, 70 yards, a touchdown, then that's, you know, that's looking good for North Carolina, which is very possible that they, they come out and do something like that, mm-hmm. or one for one for 85 yards and a touchdown. You never know with this North Carolina offense. They can score, and they can score quick. So just getting ahead on the scoreboard, not having to play from behind, especially with this defense they have. Um, you, you definitely want to you definitely want to keep the scoring, uh, you know, where you're always going up one um, or, or if you get some stops, maybe up two. Um, but you definitely want to come out firing on offense and put the pressure on the Gamecocks as soon as, you know, the game starts. Number two for me is pound the ball inside against this North Car- or against this South Carolina defense. Um, you know, you have a, a good group of running backs. You have a very good offensive line. South Carolina has a, a defensive line that loses some big names. Um, they only returned one starter on that defensive line from last season. So only four starters in total on this defense, they don't return either of their linebackers. They only return three of the five um, secondary positions, one corner and three sa- and two safeties. They lose their top two corners in Darius Rush and Cam Smith last season. So, you know, pound the ball inside against that weaker defensive line that has a lot of repair to be done. That makes those linebackers and safeties creep up, and then you can attack the inexperienced cornerbacks with your elite wide receivers especially if a guy like Tez Walker gets cleared and is able to play in this game, although I'm, I'm not sure that happens mm-hmm. with the timetable. We're only like a, a week away from, from yeah. this game, and there's still no – I doubt the decisions made from the NCAA in a week that lets him play. Um, so that's going to hurt, but you look at South Carolina, they're without Juice Wells potentially in this game. Definitely not going to be 100% for it. So – but you know you have you still have elite receivers if you're North Carolina you have the second best quarterback not even in question in the country in Drake May so if you can get these safeties and linebackers peeking into the backfield a little play action you have an 80 yard touchdown just waiting on you Mm -hmm. then number three is defensively get a few stops if you can consistently score on the South Carolina defense with both of these defenses are very very bad um, at least going into the season. They both definitely have some room to improve and have some talented pieces that could allow them to improve. South Carolina probably a little bit more than North Carolina. But as of right now, they're both terrible. You don't really know what you're going to get out of either one of them. So if this North Carolina defense can get a few stops, maybe get a turnover. We've seen Rattler, you know, he had, he did have a little bit of a turnover bug. You, you see a lot of the, you know, a lot of people – talking about South Carolina's last three games, which they were great in. But Rattler also threw four picks in the last two against Clemson and Notre Dame. He threw two each, I believe. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think three of the four were all pick sixes. Um, No, that was Buckner. That was that's right. That was that was Buckner. That's right. I knew he threw a pick six against Clemson, and I was thinking the other two were Buckner Rattler. threw six touchdowns in that game. Unfortunately, yeah. two of them were to yeah. South Carolina. Yeah, I, that's right. Now, now I remember that. But yeah, just get a few stops. You know, get a get a pick or 
force it because that is one thing North Carolina has been good at, despite the awful defense, is forcing fumbles. Mm-hmm. They yeah. they will force them and Wake Forest, the two worst defenses in the ACC, but they will they will force turnovers on and you. Georgia so, Tech and yeah and Georgia Tech. So you know if they can get a few stops while the offense is rolling, that really puts the pressure on a young inexperienced South Carolina team in a lot of positions, especially defensively. So uh, what are your three keys for a South Carolina victory? So it really starts with one key majorly, uh, and that's getting pressure on Drake May. If you can get Drake May uh, rattled and kind of uh, kind of that fight-or-flight mentality, if you can get him rattled and keep him going where he's scrambling and stuff like that, if you watch the ACC championship game, one of the highlights for the game uh, not for Drake May, but for Clemson, was just Drake May just throwing the ball in the red zone directly to a Clemson player because he was rolling out to his right and he just didn't put enough loft on the ball. If you can get Drake May under pressure, even though he is a great prospect as a quarterback, I definitely think that he is able to get rattled and I think you can get under his skin a little bit. Um, but I think number one, you gotta get pressure on Drake May. Uh, number two, you gotta get going quickly. Uh, you can't uh, be slow out of the gate. You can't be able to uh, just miss a couple of drives or stuff like that because this game is going to be extremely back and forth. It's going to be extremely high scoring. Uh, and to be honest, I would not be surprised if this game ends a lot like the North Carolina App State game last year yeah. uh, where those teams went back and forth, back and forth all game long where I think the final score was 63-61. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it like it was a game that just went back and forth, went into overtime. I think four overtimes. I think by the end of it, I don't even think it went. Did it go into overtime? I mean, maybe right I'm thinking here. of the other game. It didn't even go into overtime. No overtime. Sixty three, sixty one. No, I think what you're thinking of is at the end of the game. North Carolina returned the onside kick for a touchdown. Then yeah. App State scored in like yeah. four, and they went back. I think they scored four touchdowns in a minute. Yeah. Either way, that's key number two. You got to get on the board early and often. Key number three um, is Rattler has to play mistake ish free football. Like, Rattler is probably going to make mistakes. That's just the quarterback who he is. He's probably going to throw a stupid pick, or he's probably going to throw the ball into triple coverage. Or he's going to throw the ball away when there's a wide open receiver on the out route or uh, the hot route or whatever that uh, phrase that you want to use for that kind of gadget player, whether that be the running back or the wide receiver on a hitch or whatever. Um, Spencer Rattler has to play as much mistake free football as possible because in order to win this game, you got to win the QB battle. And if you're going to win the QB battle, it's not going to be simply through out throwing Drake May. It's going to be uh, not just out talenting Drake May, even though I think both of them are on a kind of similar, just pure talent level. Um, it's similar. I think May's a little bit better, but similar. Uh, I think what it comes down to is who can make mistake-free football. And I think if Rattler can do that, that gives South Carolina the edge in this game. Yeah, I agree. But who do you, you know? Who do you trust more to play <laughs> mistake-free? Yeah. And I, I want to lean Drake May, but in a Week One game, I don't. You know, I don't really know what's mm-hmm. gonna. It's first game of the season. I don't really know if you can. Like we don't. Yeah, Rattler was that way last year, but maybe he's improved. I don't know, but he's you know he's been that way his whole career. Oh, yeah. Last year, eighteen touchdowns to twelve picks. So like, you know, he's a guy. He he definitely throws his fair share of interceptions. And like six of those touchdowns, if not seven, were against Tennessee. So yeah, like, yeah. Like I I I was I'm arguing for South Carolina, quote unquote, but like. It's Spencer Rattler. Those yeah. last three games against Tennessee, against Clemson, and against. Um, Notre Dame, like each of those games, he I lost. I think he had like at least two against Clemson. Yeah, and he had one against Notre Dame at least. Had I to think, have at two. least five against Tennessee. I, there's no way he didn't have at least five. Yeah, so, um, um, but at the end of the day, prediction. What's your prediction? So my score prediction, I think it's going to be a close one. I could even see the score flip the way I have it, but I have North Carolina winning this game 48-41. to I think it's going to be very high scoring, very high competitive. I think the scoring could even get higher than that, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Um, I just think that 
I think that with it being early in the season, a lot of these teams are going to try and, you know, work in the run game a lot more. So I, I don't think either team's going to be scoring in, you know, four touchdowns in under a minute or two, uh, like the App State game was. So I'm not if sure. If they it gets, do, then it will get back up then to it, that yeah, 60 score. Then it definitely will. But I think a, I think a good fair score prediction be in the 40s, and I have North Carolina winning 48 to 41. Um, I'm going to go with the score prediction of 38-33. I think the game starts off a little bit slow. I think that the teams kind of maybe throw their first initial punches and then they kind of take a minute to reset uh, before they really get into it midway through that second quarter, uh, which is when I think the the points start to add up. Um, But I'm going to go with the North Carolina victory at the end of the day. Uh, Like I said, I think that this game could really go either way. I'm going to go about 55% on North Carolina's end. Um, I think Same, I'm yeah. just going to kind of rely on Drake May a little bit more than I do Rattler because I think Rattler has the very real possibility of screwing this game up and throwing just as many touchdowns to North Carolina as he does South Carolina. And plus, like Lincoln talked about, the wide receiver situation does concern me a little bit because who's your number one if Juice Wells isn't there and the transfer um, isn't there that I'm blanking on. Tez Walker for Tez Walker. North Carolina, yeah. So... Yeah, so that's going to wrap up today's video. Make sure that you hit uh, all of the uh, subscribe buttons down below and check out whichever channels you are not on, whether that be Cultural Roundup, American Football Network, or mine in the Football Expert. And as always, have a great day. See you guys.